Welcome to part one of the Backrooms Game Lab. In this Beginner's Unity series, I'll be showing you how to make a Backrooms game with realistic graphics. And this is a website that you can use to download Unity. So if you go down, you'll see that you need to accept the terms. So if you just click that and then press download Unity Hub, something down here will pop up. Now for me, it's a DMG file, but for uh, Windows, it might be an EXE file, but you just wanna go ahead and open that when it's done. And when you're done installing it, something that looks like this should open. So I'm first gonna show you how to use the Unity Hub. So the first thing that you want to do is press this settings icon right here, go to license management, and you're going to want to activate a new license. You're going to want to press Unity Personal, and then you're going to want to press I don't use Unity in a professional capacity, unless you do, but, but I'm pretty sure most of you won't. Then when you press done, you might have to log into an account, but it should generate a license. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and create a new installation of Unity. So to do that, just go over here and go down to installs. The version of Unity that we're going to be using for this tutorial series is 2021. So go up here and press add, and then find a version that is 2021. When you have it selected, just press next, and then press done. This will start installing the version of Unity that you clicked, but this is going to take a while, so pause the video, and when it's done installing, we'll continue the tutorial. Okay, now that your version of Unity has been installed, go over to projects, and create new. Then you're going to want to click the version of Unity that we want to use for this tutorial series, in this case, we're going to be using 2021 and then give it a name. So for me, I'm going to put the back rooms and then I'm going to come over here and press universal render pipeline. Now, this is the most important part because this is going to give us the cool graphics that we want later. This shouldn't affect your performance because the main purpose of the Unity render pipeline is to make it run faster on all devices, including mobile. So go ahead and click universal render pipeline and then press create. Now something like this should pop up, and this is going to be a, basically a loading screen, so whenever you open your project, this loading screen will show. The reason why it's taking so long the first time is because it's establishing your project, it's creating everything, it's putting all the assets where they should be, but soon it will load and everything will just open up. When your project finishes opening, it will open a tab that looks something like this. And you're going to want to first of all maximize this so that it takes up your full screen. Then when you maximize it, it will look like this. So you have something over here called the inspector tab the hierarchy tab, the scene tab, and then there's something down here that says the project window and the console. So you can click on these to switch between them, the scene and game tab, you can switch between these two, but most importantly, the scene tab. So the most important tab here is the scene tab. So to move around this scene tab, you're gonna to wanna to right click on the screen, or if you're on Mac, put the two fingers down, you know how that works, and then click it. So you'll be able to move around and use WASD to move the actual camera around but it kind of moves around like this. And you can zoom in as well by uh, using the scroll wheel or just moving two fingers in and out if you're on a MacBook. We start off with a very interesting and boring scene here. But the first thing we want to do is kind of get familiar with what we have here. So first of all, if we click on something, you can move it up and down like this. You can move it left to right like that. Then you can move it in and out like that. So that's basically how you move stuff around. And you can see we have some controls up here. If you press this one, you can rotate something. If you press this one, you can scale it up. If you press this one, it's, it's just all kinds of controls. So you, you can kind of like mess around with this stuff for a, while, for a while until you're kind of familiar with it. But yeah, um, you can also press Control Z or Command Z to undo and then Command Shift Z or Control Y to redo. So that's a really important thing that you should never forget. You can always undo, you can always redo. And if you forget those, then there's a lot of times that you're going to have to redo everything manually, which takes a very long time. Now that we're done playing around with those controls, if we go up here and press Game, and then come up here and press this play icon, we're able to play our game. So when it plays, it basically looks like this. And in our scene, we can press WASD to move the camera around. And um, yeah, some basic controls. So yeah, you can move around this inside of our game tab. Whenever our game is paused, this will be completely inactive. So this only works when we press the play button. So the first thing we wanna do is get rid of some stuff. For all these example assets, we can come up to here in the hierarchy. We can click this and then right click and press delete. Now that, now, that, now, that, now that that's gone, you'll see up here where it says sample scene, there's this little star here. That means that we haven't saved our scene yet. So to save our scene, all you have to do is press Command S or Control S, depending on which device you're on. Next, go over to this project window down here and go into where it says assets and click this folder here called scenes. If you double click it, you can open it and you'll see our scene here. So this is the sample scene which is this scene that we're currently inside of. Because we're making a Backrooms game, let's call this level zero. And this will be the level that we um, have the, you know, the office hallways, the yellow corridors, all that light bulbs and stuff like that. So yeah, 
Um, it does say something here, scenes have been modified externally. Let's just press reload and everything works. So as you can see here, it says level zero. We still have everything in the scene, but it just says level zero now. Let's also practice renaming objects. So to rename an object, just click on an object and press enter. Now you can just press the left arrow or click over here and you can type something in here. So I'm gonna rename my camera to temporary, temporary main camera. The reason why it's called a temporary main camera or why I called it a temporary main camera is because later on we're gonna have our player. And when we have a player, we have to delete this main camera since it doesn't really work with our player. So we'll have a new main camera, a different main camera, but we'll get to that later. So we wanna experiment with making some objects here. So to make an object, just click this plus icon right under the hierarchy. And when you click it, a menu should pop up that looks like this. All we care about really are 3D objects. So let's click 3D object and press cube. Now, as you'll see, a cube spawns here and it needs a second to render, but there you go. We have a cube in the scene. As you can see, when we go to different tools here, it shows us different things that we can do to this cube. So really the most important tool is gonna to be this tool, the transform tool. And this changes our position of the, key, of the cube and yeah, we'll use this a lot in the future, but for now, let's just kind of play around with it. And you'll also see when we update the position of this, the transform in the inspector tab over here changes. So if I change the Y on this, the green one, then the green one, which is the Y over here, changes. When I move the red one over here, the X changes. And when I move the blue one, the Z changes. So that's always gonna be universal in Unity. The Z is blue, the X is red, and the Y is green. Never forget that. So for our scene, what we're gonna wanna do is go over here and click the scale tool. So it's the one that kind of looks like this. And when you click on the cube with the scale tool enabled, just let's just uh, make it a little bit smaller here. Now we have a kind of a floor-like thing. So we can just come over here to the rect tool. So we'll come over here to our cube and we wanna make this cube proportionally bigger over here. So to make it proportionally bigger, all we wanna do is just press shift, press the diagonal one right here and just drag it. So as you can see, it's proportionally bigger now instead of just normally doing it where it would make it really, it would make it just kind of a rectangle. But we want it to stay a square, so we do shift and it stays proportional. Now it's kind of big here, so let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's come over here, press the scale tool, make it a little bit smaller on the Y, bring it down a little bit with this transform tool or the move tool, and then there you go. Now we kind of have a floor here. Let's come over to the hierarchy, rename this to floor, and then let's press control D or command D on it to duplicate it. This is gonna be a wall. So let's first of all rename this to wall by pressing enter and then renaming it to wall. And now let's press E or this rotate tool right here. And we're gonna to wanna to rotate this to make it more like a wall. So to do that, we're gonna press this red one. And as you can see, when you move around this red one, it changes and it kind of looks like a wall. But the rotation doesn't snap to any grid, as you can see, because it's kind of really hard to just get it to be perfectly at a 90 degree angle. But to do it in a way easier way, all we're going to want to do is press Command or Control, and then you'll see that it, it, it gets this grid-like effect here. So instead of just going all berserk and crazy, we have a grid that kind of locks it in place. So let's make it go to, yeah, negative 90 degrees is fine. 90 or negative 90 degrees. Let's make this not go through the ground by coming over here to this Rec tool and then dragging it up a little bit without pressing Shift. And there you go, it kind of looks like a wall but it's not in the middle of our cube, so we're gonna to wanna to come over to the move tool, bring it back a little bit. As you can see, we have a, a wall and a floor. We could benefit from the wall being a little bit higher up, just like that. Now we're gonna to wanna to duplicate this wall, bring it over a little bit, just like that. I think that's about at the edge, yep. And now we want a wall on this side. So to do that, we wanna duplicate our wall first of all, and to rotate it, we wanna click this green one. As you can see, this rotates it this way. So to get it to snap onto the grid, I'm gonna hold command or on Windows, hold control. And it gives me the grid-like effect. Now I can move it backwards with this red one and move it with this blue one. All right, and now we have this kind of box area right here. So the last thing we wanna do right now is make a roof. So all we have to do to do that is just click the floor, duplicate it, press this green one to bring it up a little bit. And there you go, you have a roof. Now that we have this box here, what we wanna do, and this is really, really important, click the directional light in the hierarchy. And as you can see, we have this like sun here and we do not want a sun in our back rooms because it really, see how it, look at, look at the ground here. If the sun is going through the ground, it's glitching. We don't need a sun right now. So we're gonna go ahead and right click this, click delete. And as you can see now, our scene is darker. There's no like weird sun going through it, but it still does look a little bit weird. There's fog and weird things happening. 
So to fix that, we want to go up here, go to window, go down a little bit, and go to rendering, and then press the lighting. Now, as you can see, this lighting window pops up. I'm just going to drag this over here just to make it easier to use. Then I'm going to go to environment. And as you can see, there's this thing here called environment lighting. We want to first of all turn this real time shadow color to black. This will make our shadows black instead of blue. Now we want to click environment lighting from skybox to just a color. Because there's no skybox in the back rooms, we don't want the lighting to be inspired by our skybox. We want it to be inspired by the lights that we actually put into the back rooms, the fluorescent lights. So our ambient color is going to be black. Make sure you turn it to black. And then in environment reflections, we want to come over to intensity multiplier and turn this down to zero. You'll also want to turn fog completely off. And then if we just make this more accurate by coming up here, clicking this like little arrow right here, and then clicking skybox. As you can see, this is what our area looks like. It's really, really dark. So the last thing I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial is how to make a light. So we want to come to this plus icon that we used earlier to make a cube. Click it, go down to light, click point light. And then as you'll see, then as you'll see here, this entire area turns blue for a second, and then we have a light. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. I think that's where our fluorescent light should be. And if we come over here in our inspector tab, go down to light, come down here and drag the intensity a little bit. We can make the light actually brighter or darker, depending on what we want. So for now, I'm going to turn this light intensity to say 10. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to turn it, make it a little bit more yellow. And yeah, I'd say this is about the back room's color. So we have this yellow light up here. Later on, we'll add the fluorescent light to make it kind of more like a square. But yeah, for now, this is all we have. So if we go ahead, save the scene by pressing Command S or Control S, never forget to save the scene. Then we come over to game and click play. And this does look kind of creepy already. But as you see, as you see here, we have our room. It looks kind of creepy. It goes out into complete darkness. And yeah, um, this is pretty much all we're going to be doing in this tutorial today. And come back for part two when it releases. I'll be explaining how to make graphics and make them look really realistic. But yeah, I've been the Jake. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one.